Hey guys, Summer Slevin here, Van Life in Real Life. Uh, something that I wanted to talk about today was really how difficult it actually is to find where you're gonna sleep at night. Uh, I really didn't anticipate that it would be such a difficult part of living in a vehicle. Uh, I spent a couple months living in my car after graduating university and yeah I just like kind of pulled into places and slept and it was just kind of like a temporary thing so it wasn't that big of a deal kind of forgot about it and then when I moved into my van last July it started really stressing me out every night I'd have to figure out where I was gonna park that night and I would get freaked out about somebody knocking on my window and I envisioned this life being all like beautiful trees like free camp areas I don't know I don't know how I envisioned it but in reality I spent a lot of nights in parking lots uh, and I know it's probably something that people say uh, but it's kind of hard to find a parking lot that's safe and that is open <laughs> so no one will knock on your window and that you can look stealthy in uh, so that people don't know that you're in your van. And for me it's a little bit easier because I do have a stealthy van. I have a little Ford Transit Connect that looks like a little construction vehicle. But I know that it's more difficult for other people. So I use a couple of apps. I know that people use freecampsites.net. I haven't really done too much research on it, but I know that it's something that's really valuable for people. And then I use iOverlander quite a bit, just because I love the way that people um, upload their reviews, and you can just upload their, your coordinates. It worked really well when I was in Alaska because it works offline, which is phenomenal. Something else that I do is, um, I actually used to work at Barnes & Noble for a few years, and so I know that they usually build those in really like good communities. So if I'm going to a Walmart, I check to see if there's like a Barnes & Noble nearby so that I know that I'm like not camped out in a real shady area. Um, I also just sometimes Google 24 hours, and I can park at any location that's 24 hours, usually. Um, sometimes I even have to um, park at like apartment complexes. I haven't done that since I was in my car. Uh, or hotels, but make sure that the hotels isn't like the hotel isn't really fancy and doesn't check uh, like you know your uh, license plate. But honestly, I haven't ever had trouble with my van parking at hotels. Uh, another thing I do is just pull over at rest stops. I love rest stops. Like I don't know what it is, but it's just like super convenient, super safe usually, and I actually love the sound of like trucks and stuff. I guess it's from like being in my vehicle for so long, but I find it to be really soothing, the sound of like very low cars like going past. Walmart parking lots seem to have car alarms going off quite frequently, which drives me insane. Um, but I do go there, especially when I have to work every day for that week with my clients. I just will camp in the city for four of those days, for those nights. Uh, and then I'll probably go on my way to another national park or camp in BLM land, um, which I haven't done as much in my van as I did in my car, but I'm planning on making my way to the west coast for the first time in my van, and I know I'm going to use BLM land then. So that's just something that you should be aware might stress you out more than you realized with van life is literally finding something, a place to stay that night. It can get really stressful. Um, but if you make a game plan earlier in the day before you get really tired or really hangry, I highly recommend doing that because it's so much easier on your mental psyche doing that. Alright guys, I uh, hope that was helpful finding some camping spots and maybe I'll add more to it when I'm in the West Coast and when I have another year of experience living in my van. I don't know. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for places that you can stay. I have heard of uh, Harvest Host. I thought that was really cool. I heard about it in the RV community where you actually like can stay at like golf courses or uh, vineyards or things like that. I'm still waiting to check that out. I'm going to check it out though because it sounds really cool. And then there's some that are like you exchange work for camping, which is pretty cool. Never done it though. So like that's not where I have my area of expertise. I usually literally just pull into a parking lot or use a rest stop or just literally use Ireland and camp in a random dead end spot or in the middle of the woods somewhere. So there's my perspective of that. And yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions right there.